Hello, folks, and welcome back to the Brawl Boxing Podcast, brought to you by the Brawl Network in association with DraftKings. I'm Kieran McCourt, and I'm joined by co-hosts Colin McGuigan and Ram McLaughlin. As always, guys, we're sponsored by Manscaped, which produce some of the highest quality male grooming products to people all over the world. So if you use our discount code BRAWL, you'll get 20% off. That's BRAWL. Big shout out this week as well goes to the lads at Ford FC. Um, Gary and Shay and stuff, lads, you've been excellent in the support. So as we thank you, Rand doesn't know this, but I've been speaking to Rand's agent and I've agreed a wee loan deal next year. So if you can free up that right back position, that would be great. Thanks very much, lads, for the support. Thanks for that, McCourt. Well, folks, we're back for the second episode of the year, and we're really excited about this next guest. So joining us today is one of the most exciting talents in British boxing, Josh Pretty Boy Kelly. Josh, how are you doing, mate? Yes, brother. Nice to be on, big man. All good. All good, bro. Appreciate All good you coming on, Josh. Appreciate you coming yes, on. Tom bro. said you're, you're one of the most exciting talents coming out of uh, Great Britain at the minute, and... Um, well, we ask a lot of people as you come on the podcast, but how did you first get into boxing? Were you punching the head off a few Newcastle fans when you were a kid? <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, no, boxing. It, it, well, it wasn't a sport I chose, to be fair. I was a football guy at first, a big, big, big football guy. So I played for Sunderland when I was a kid, young kid. Did you? So I was like, between nine and ten, I was on the Sunderland um, Development Centre, then moved in the academy, and then had bout, bouts back and forth of the academy and the development centre. And I went and played Saturday League, played for Hartlepool for a little bit. And then nice. as I was doing that, um, my dad sort of got us into boxing alongside the football. So I ran it alongside it for a little bit. And then and then the boxing started to take off a little bit more. And the boxing was a little bit more... Um, well, my dad, my dad was a little bit more of a fan of boxing than, than football. So I guess I just followed what he said. And it was it was it was more challenging on my body to be fair. Like I couldn't keep up with everyone was grown as footballers. They were all big and they were all strong. And I was I was like as a kid I was strong, but when I was trying to hold my weight for certain fights and stuff, I wasn't grown as big. So um, when I was a kid I was I was I was smaller, so I just thought to myself, I'll um I'll stick this boxing and see, see what happens. So did you did yeah, you ever man. have to combine them both? If anyone oh. got in a bad tackle on you or anything? <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of times, you know, when only you're on the field and, and the footballers the footballers spring up on you and they think you can have a go and you're like, what's happening? Brands that guy. You, don't know. you, you hit him with about six left hooks, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, he's got it. <laughs> no. Funny you say that. Funny you say that, Josh, just before you came on, Ram was saying he'd love to spar you. Because he was saying he, 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 right, he fancies right. his chances, yeah. True. He's, true. Your brother's down my way, isn't he? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> down my way. So, <laughs> I'll get him to spy you instead. I'll get him to spy you instead. He's got a he's, he's got a nose enough for you to actually be hit him with a left hook. You'll be able to find that from anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, Adam Booth has been on record as saying you're one of the most naturally talented fighters he's ever worked with. We always mm. like that from the start, or were, were you a bit different at the start? Did your style kind of change, or? Um, so as an amateur, I was uh, as an amateur, I was I was I won my first like national title when I was twelve, and then went on from there. Um, but things sort of grow. I started to get my natural style from like when I when I went to my dad when I started getting trained by my dad. So my dad just start letting us do what I wanted to do, while other coaches weren't so high on. Oh, you can't keep your hands down. You can't do that. And I was like, "Well, I'm get, I'm I'm for, for me. It was just when you're a kid and like, see, football is probably one of the easiest things. And when you're a kid, you you want to watch Cristiano Ronaldo do step overs. You want to watch well, my way, my day was Ronaldo, the fat Ronaldo with the haircut, you know, from yeah. Brazil. That yeah. was the guy. Do you know what I mean? Everyone wanted to be like the most. Like you want to copy the skillful guys. You don't want to. You never look at guys who's just solid and go, oh, I want to be like that solid guy, do you know what I mean? So, obviously, I was looking at, like, Nas and all the greats back in the day, Roy Jones, Colonel Whittaker, um, Willie Pe- all the old school fighters, and I was watching them thinking, like, that makes me excited. So, I wanted, to, I wanted to, to, like, box like them. I just wanted to just be able to box like them. And then um, one thing led to another, and I so, sort of found a natural rhythm and style through it. So, um, yeah, I just carried on, and then I just I managed to keep it going. And I obviously... Um, in the professional ranks, but obviously I've got different styles and different and different um, different bits to my game. So it's not just uh, everyone just thinks I'm I'm this fancy Dan, but I, I think when we see, especially in this next fight, that it's not gonna it's not gonna be like that all the was way it, through my career. 
was it frowned upon though, uh, like in your early days when you're when you're sort of doing like the, the Nas look, and the, the Roy Jones stuff? Was uh, it sort of like just reel it in or did they encourage uh, it? Little, yeah, a little bit, little bit like the coaches. I would I would be sparring some of the coaches would be like, um, I'd spar and I'd, I'd go for the round lock and hit and hitting the guy and hitting the guy and then the guy would catch me with one or two shots and they go, ah, oh, see, that's why I had his hands down. But I was like, wait there, before you, before them one or two shots. I'd been blasting your guy there with like shot after shot after shot and you never once said to him why you get caught with end shots. He had his hands up so I would end shots catching him so I was just like puzzled by it but obviously um, the art of boxing is hitting and not getting hit and trying to make yourself as the most awkward you can in the ring and to be like a puzzle so people can't figure it out. Obviously the greats do that like me with it etc. Obviously I'm not comparing myself to any of them but if I find a style that's going to be awkward enough to trouble you, then I'm going to sit with that style. I'm not going to be basic in, um, and like all the rest of the guys out there who, well, not all the rest of the guys, but the majority of guys try and fight like so. I think that's why you probably got a massive fan base as well. Is like, you're, you don't really get that a lot in uh, the UK. I mean, you have a flashy style and like, mm. you obviously back it up as well with knockouts and, mm. and things like that. So like, I think that's why you got that fan base as well because everyone sort of buzzes off it. Like if we're watching a fight and we see that, we're like it does, it gets you red yeah. up, but you buzz off it and I think that's why as well. I mean, you either hate it or you love it, don't you? I mean, some people sit there and go, I hope he gets knocked down. Other people <laughs> sit there and go, ah, did you see what he did? And it's just, it is what it is, isn't it? At the end of the day, um, um, I don't really listen to either side. I, I, I don't. To be fair, I, I love the sub. I, I can't. I can't. I'm overwhelmed with the support I get, and um, um, I do know I get a fair bit of criticism as well. But I've just, just got to keep myself levelled and just keep myself knowing where I'm at. And in the gym, I'm doing the things I'm doing, and I know what I'm doing in the gym. So that should just transfer into the fight. So, um, yeah, man. I think I think it's weird <laughs> as well because like. People automatically assume it's cockiness when they see like your style mm. or Roy Jones or something. They assume like, oh, he's so cocky or it's arrogance. Mm. When really you're you're just it, it seems like you're very much aware it's entertainment. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's what boxing is. It's entertainment. No, that's so. it. Well, it's a business. I mean, at the end of the day, what boxing? You if you look after yourself, you've got ten years in boxing, like a good ten years. If if you if you have a good career, you really. To be fair, with boxing, every time you're stepping in the ring, it's a risk. It's a risk. You're risking your life for the entertainment. Of, the public so um it's not like I'm just going out the door and just in, and going to work I mean I, I know how hard that is as well I've worked a normal job I've been and did did the um I worked in the factory and everything was up at silly silly times going to work and stuff and I know how hard that can be mentally but with boxing you're going in there and you're putting your life on the line every time you go in there so if you can do that the least amount of times you can and get the biggest amount of money you can by entertaining then it's a no-brainer do you, want to, do, you, do, you get, do you get what I mean because yeah, at the end of the day you've got you got to set your family up after this. You got like, and if you've got, on average, between five and ten years, then you got to be the most eye-catching so people can buy in and and want to watch you and, and want to watch your fight. So yeah, you're 100%. like the, you're like the Ronaldinho of boxing. Only Mick Cannon got his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my oh, days! That oh. there, right, is some gold that needs to be seen. Somebody <laughs> needs to see that right now. I'll oh go ahead and snip it. I'll go ahead and snip it. Well, oh. Mick, Mick now owns fifty percent of pro boxing, so he might have to. We might have to edit that out on their mixer. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh. yeah, that is gold. That is. Oh, yeah. I never thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so, Josh, oh, tell us this. Uh, you obviously you won. Bronze at the European Games, and then you went to yeah. the Olympics when you were, I think, what twenty twenty one. What was that yeah. experience like for you? Mad, mad. The thing is, I built it up in my head as a kid, being like, it's the biggest thing, um, the biggest thing I'm ever going to go to, and the bit I expected to be massive. So when I got there, um, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like I was it downplayed by any chance, but because I built it up that much in my head. Like when I got there, it it didn't it sort of my expectations were so much bigger than what it was. Do you know what I mean? I was, but when when I look back on it now, I guess memories take and experiences take a while to to sink in because when I'm looking back at the experiences now, I realise how big they were. But when I'm in there just doing it, you just don't know. You just you just rolling with it. And you don't know what like what like you don't know how big this experience is. When I walked out in the um, 
So we're walking out in the Olympic the Olympic opening ceremony thing where you walk out and you do the thing. And we did all line us up in a certain order. So I remember Andy Murray being at the front. He was the flag bearer. Then you had like uh, the girls and then you had some other sports and what you are. But boxing was pretty far back. And I thought, and there's no way I'm not getting seen on telly by my mum, my dad, my brother, anybody like that, or any of my friends. And there's no way I'm not getting seen here. So we're all lining up and the, the stewards are there keeping you all in line and stuff. And then you go into this tunnel and you, you're in the tunnel for a little bit. The tunnel is really hectic. The tunnel is where it gets messy, where people are trying to keep you in line. You've got to stay with your team. you got to be there. Blah, blah, blah. No, 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 you can't walk yet. Don't go yet, right? So as I, as they're doing this, I'm just looking like through the people, thinking, "Where's my gap? Where I can get the front right?" So, anyways, boom, they've let us out. I've just went flying through everybody, and I'm. <laughs> I remember this guy. He was with gymnastics, and I clipped the back of his heel, and he's like an older guy. He's went flying, but I've looked at him. He's looked up at us. He's on the floor like that, and I've just thought. Mate, you're getting left, you know. I'm just gonna go for this moment. Like, I can't let you like. I can't, you know what I mean? He was like, in, and then end up, uh, end up getting right up next to Andy Murray, who's walking out, and I was waving everybody like this, and my mom and dad were cracking up yes. when I was telling them. But like, mate, if like you wanted, if back, you wanted to get on TV, you could have started just calling Aiba cheating cunts. No, <laughs> <laughs> do that. Exactly. <laughs> oh, mate. Instant yeah. viral, like. Yeah, I know that. We were all there. We were all in the village when that happened and it went mad. I was, I, to be fair, I rated it. I told Mick, I said, I rated it. But like, you just, what what, what can you do? You're there and the, uh, Team JB were like, do not share any of this. Do not do any of this. Do, 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 don't affiliate with this. But it was all just a madness with that, that Brazil one was just crazy. So, yeah. What was that village like? What was it? Like any, obviously you're full of big names, I'm sure. Like the mm. ever running then him, like Paddy Barnes was stalking Usain Bolt when he was in the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Oh, we, me, I, would, I come in contact with Usain Bolt. But I didn't have the most like, the most friendly encounter to be fair. Like I remember one of the guys saying, um, oh, get a photo, get a photo, get a photo. So the guys, I forgot who it was. So I took a photo of him and Usain's got his glasses on, just looking the opposite way like this, not taking any notice that my man's standing right next to him with his arm like next to him and that, right? He's been drawing a photo of Josh. I went, I'm not, I says, I'm all right. I says, he, he looks like a proper prick on that photo, bro. I'm not going to lie. I says, look at him. <laughs> he's just faced you the way like this and you're getting a photo of him. I says, that's bad. It doesn't matter who he is, you're not going to get a photo like that. He's bro. just fuming your left hand is faster than him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh it, 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 so, Michael Phelps, the same Michael Phelps, but he, he only come in the village like um, once, I think, because he was like, he got mobbed in the in the dining room. Like, he had his hood up and that, and he was eating, and he just got absolutely mobbed. Um, who else? There's a couple of other guys out there, but it's mad out, like, it's mad when the big stars come into the village because they just, they're, it just really accentuates how, how much of a, uh, how much of a great athlete you are because all you think all of us are on the same playing field, all of us in the Olympics, yet we're all running to get photos with these guys. It's absolutely mad. But well, what uh, was, was the good. difference in like nerves at that stage compared to like your pro debut in Glasgow? Like, was there a difference? Um, uh, that's an odd one, you know, a weird one. Um, Glasgow felt, Glasgow felt, um, I think I was probably more. I get, I get really excited. I get excited before fights. I'm getting, like, I, these nerves are like weird to explain. Like, I get excited to go in. So as I'm, I, my range of excitement, I think I was more probably um, more surprised. I don't know. As, as I was walking out the Olympics, I hadn't actually been in the stadium before. So when I come out the Olympics, it was like, whoa, whoa. I, I didn't realise how big it was. And I was like, you know, there's loads of people here, like, fuck me. And I was looking, I was thinking, shit. So when I jumped in, boxed the first kid, I thought, I know what I'm, I know what I'm in for the next time I get in here, because this was fucking massive. And then, um, obviously in Glasgow, it was, it was like a surreal experience. I was walking down, like Eddie was there, Adam was there. And, and then when the name got shouted, it all seemed like really big, like a blur. Like it was weird. It was like the first fight I've ever had as an amateur. It was like, as a pro, do you get what I mean? Like similarities yeah. where it was really... It was really, um, it was really weird. I remember that. I, I just remember walking out and just fucking seeing everybody there, and you're like, "What the fuck?" And you walk into the ring and trying to play cool, but in your head you're thinking, "Fucking hell, this is mad." <laughs> <laughs> no air guards and that, and just fucking like you top off and that. You're thinking, "Jesus, do I look fat on this telly or what?" <laughs> 
<laughs> You're like, am I still gonna be fucking pretty boy here? You had you had that flashy exciting style even from the amateurs, but it was like tailor made for the pros. Was we always gonna like turn over after the Olympics? And what made well, the same uh, with Eddie? Eh, it was a mad one, mate. Um tells you I'm checking this charger and I'm gonna die. Boom, it's all right. Yeah, I'm shaking this don't charger on the cell phone. <laughs> no, well, um so I had a mad ordeal leaning in the amateurs like Olympics and stuff. I, I like quit before the Olympics. Um I quit in like it's probably late late like end of 2015. And I just decided I don't want to box anymore because it was just the weight was getting on top of us and I would just um I won the Europeans and and I was the f- and then I went to the the qualifiers, the World Championship qualifier, got by, beat by that rabbi who went and won the gold. And I was just sort of just a little bit stuck in myself. And I was seeing, see, I'd, when I was growing up, I was so in the sport, so in the sport with my dad being my coach and everything else. I think I felt like I'd I'd, ne- I'd never had a I never had like I'd always been like this. I never had any of that. So as soon as I let my hair down for a second and saw this, I was like, whoa what have I been missing here? And I thought it was better than boxing for some reason. And of course it's not. When you're mature, you just think it's weird. And um, obviously that was meant, that was meant to be. I meant, I was, I was meant to obviously um, take that path to sort of challenge myself and realize what, I, what, what really I was missing out on. Cause I went and did, I remember I was promoting for nightclubs and stuff on the, on, in like Newcastle and. You could have ended up on Geordie Shore. <laughs> oh, me, I was close. I was close. I'm, from, I'm from Sunderland, then I bought. Yeah. You know what I mean? The thing is, I was I was out on night, like nightclubs and that, like, and lads were going, "Fuck are you! You're not boxing anymore." I was going, "Ah, oh, no, I'm just taking a little break." But obviously, I knew me head. I went, I was I was gone, and then I come back into team. Um, I remember coming back in, like, um, ringing, going back and forth with the coaches, and because they, they, I'd said I'd left and. They eventually sort of agreed I'd come back in, but I wasn't going to go to the first qualifier. But the first qualifier, I was I was number one seed in Europe out of all the countries, so I probably would have had the best draw in the in the European qualifier. But another guy went on my way because I couldn't. Obviously, I was nowhere near fit enough and nowhere near um, where I needed to be weight wise. So I don't know. God, God, God's got a plan because that guy didn't qualify. I got sent to the next qualifier, um, and I. I qualified in like what I I hadn't even boxed in like six months. I just come in and seem to qualify, which was just mad. And then did boom, you, I'm did you know at that point, like like before? So this is before you qualified. Did you yeah. have in your head that you would turn over pro after? No, I didn't know because all the experience right in the amateurs. My dad was saying, "Listen, if you love boxing, you turn pro. If you don't love boxing, don't turn professional." And I was like, "Right." So I had six months of just sitting down and just basically um just basically finding finding myself a little bit like I was in London I was I, had a, I um met the missus and everything else I was just finding myself and I was just doing what a normal lad does but so uh, I'm I quite I, I get deep in thought sometimes so I was sitting there and thinking 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 and I was just thinking about everything then one day I just got up and I was like I rang with dad I was like listen I'm definitely, definitely, definitely going to turn professional. This is the only thing I can, like, the only thing I love doing is boxing. When I watch it, it, I get excited and I feel like through everything I've been through in amateur and stuff, I wouldn't, in everything what I've did, I just like, in the ups and downs I've had, um, there's got to be a reason why I'm still here and I'm still, I'm still, there's got to be a reason why I went to the Olympics. There's got to be a reason why God put this plan in place for me to, so, we had a talk and then my dad messaged Adam Booth on Facebook and then um, randomly he messaged back. He never uses Facebook and then he just messaged back and then um, I went down at a train session with him, one train session, and I was like, whoa, I can't even box this guy saying I can't box. I didn't have a job or anything. He was like, this is... He was like, yeah, I'm seeing, I'm seeing you've got talent, but like your job needs a lot of work. Your right hand needs a lot of work and I'm thinking, fucking hell. I'm just coming from the Olympics, mate. What are you on about? Like, I'm thinking, you're mad. <laughs> and he's like, nah, like, you need a lot of work. And I'm thinking, so fuck. And so when I'm driving home, that hit us. And I was like, how oh, it is? I've learned so much in our first session there, like an hour. And I was like, how can, why was I not doing that? Like in the Olympics, I probably would have won if I did that. And I was like, I'm driving by in the car thinking, like, what, what all the things? Why was I not getting taught that? So 
I had a couple of months and spent different, like trying to find out different places, different coaches and stuff. And then I just, um, I eventually just went right. I'm turning, I'm turning my Adam and just went back down to the gym, asked asked his permission to come down and stuff. And then one led, one thing led to another, and now we're here. So what what was it like yeah. having Ram Burnett in the gym when you first joined? <laughs> was that inspiring for you to have like such a young like unified world champion? Yeah, he's in, he's intense as well. He's intense training. Like everything about him is like if. You, like everything about him is like um, if you say if you like you just do everything to its max so if you say Ryan I want you just to relax today like it, 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 that's all he'll do just relax I'll just be like oh, I'm relaxing now, I, you try and get him to do something no I'm relaxing today like, I'm just relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> like if you say Ryan you have to do these the hardest you ever do them he will put himself in the hospital like he's actually he, he's a true story for you right Mick Conlon, one of his first training sessions, he come to Adams. We do, we used to do these hills or Pearly Hill. We change we change and now do this other hill, but it was a hard session. I wasn't there, and um, Michael says so. We run up and Ryan's obviously trying to beat me up. He says, "Boom, he's beat." Like we, he says, "I've never did them before, so I'm just like trying to gauge where I'm at. I'm not trying to beat him. I'm just trying to keep him and stuff." But it was, it was Ryan's first session back as well. Anyways, Ryan's did them all flat out. Michael's thinking, "Fuck me, this is solid." This. So he's come down in there, in the car driving home, and then, um, and then, right, I, I think Adam or Michael goes, "Are you all right, Ryan?" And Ryan's, Ryan's starting to go like this in the car, all folded <laughs> up and shit like this, like his hands in his mouth and everything. And I was like, "What?" And then um, he's going to drive us to the hospital. <laughs> 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 right, that's boy. that's called and play beside. <laughs> this guy, this guy pushed himself that much. I think it, he'd come back, he'd come back around after about 10 minutes, but he didn't go to the hospital. He just ended up being normal after 10 minutes, but he pushed that much that I think the oxygen levels in his body just closed, after something mad, closed off and everything just started cramping up and it weren't working. He, his mouth weren't working or nothing. Jesus. So we call it the hospital button. Like when, when we go, when we, uh, when we, when we do a hard session, we say like, are we going to press the hospital button? Because he, he, Fucking truly did. We well, like I says, he was going to end up winning. Was it? Is it hard, but for Booth, like Booth has so many young up and coming talents. Like, yeah. like at one point, like he had you, Conlon, and Burnett together. Yeah. Like, which are three such exciting talents. Is it hard for mm-hmm. him to sort of distribute the time? Yeah, Maybe I mean, or? I guess, I guess it would be for him. But I mean, like Ryan and Michael around were around the same weight. I was obviously heavier, so he just separate sessions. So he'd have like me, I'd be in like the, I'd be in like just half an hour after, and he'd give a lot of time to them, and then he'd give a lot of time to me, or vice versa. And it, it you know, whoever's got fights earlier, he'd, he'd obviously spend more time with them than them. And he's got ways and means. He's, he, Adam is experienced enough. I mean, he never really has that many fighters at one time, but I mean, I think this is the most he's had in in years at one time. To be fair. Yeah, you can see the confidence he has in you because he sort of like mm. fast checked your pro career because like you had your WBA international title fight and what your sixth fight against Carlos hey. and Molina. Yeah. And like what 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 made you like take that step up so quickly? Was it Adam well, and his, his confidence in you? Well, uh, my it was so after me like when I fought, fought my first fight against Jay Jay Byrne from from Ireland, he was he was like he'd only been beat off Felix Cash and he'd only been beat on points, so um. I was like, that's a decent fight for me first fight. So anyways, took that uh, confidence build, confidence build, confidence build, confidence build. We're coming into the sixth fight now and um, we've got a couple of names on the table and there was a few names flying about. I forgot what ones, but they weren't coming through. They weren't, nothing was coming through. It was either something to do with money, something to do with time or something. They couldn't, they wanted more money or more time, something to do along their minds. And then Adam was like, oh, he's stuck with an opponent. So I was looking through... Um, the list of a list of boxes on on the box rack. And I said, What about Carlos Molina? And he was like, Oh, it's just no, he's he's a horrible opponent of box. He says he's tough and he uses his head and all that. And I was like, I think he's oh, I think he's I think he looks shit me. Adam was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, it, not, not like that, not like that. Do you know what I mean? But I thought like I think I think I could I can beat him, do you know what I mean? I think I can I can beat him like he's not going to be like a t- I don't think he's going to be a tough fight. I think he's too slow. And I was like, oh my. so he rang his back. He's like, okay, you want that fight? I was like, yeah, we'll go there. So we went, and obviously, when he come to the press conference and stuff, he's talking all this stuff like, I'm going to build me a career battle. This is the fight. It's going to change me, and I'm going to beat this. And I'm 
thinking to myself, God, dear, now this kid's come proper game. I thought he's going to come for, like, he's a bit older. I thought he's going to come and, like, <laughs> have a little roll about. Do you know what I mean? Fuck off home. He's coming over to pop with those. I thought, oh, let's go. So, obviously, now I'm hyped in and I'm, I'm, I'm ready. So, um, and then obviously it went the way it went. And I, I, I just knew in my head, I know certain, I know certain stars and what work and what won't work. And I know, I, like me and Adam now gel really good because he knows like my, my IQ in boxing is IQ is massive. So when we talk about things, you see little things and it just like it triggers things in your head. And yeah, I know, I think I know exactly where we are and perfect steps we're taking now. So it's pretty. Was there, was there any part of you when he did come over like really game? Was there any part of you like, fuck, is this too soon? <sighs> There's a weird one, like your subconscious always, always, um, you've always got, you'll always have little things in your mind, but to, to, to be able to box at a level and to be able to perform at level, you have to have true belief in yourself. So you have to have true belief in yourself. And you see a lot of, a lot of fights are won by energy and, and true belief. You come into the fight a little bit off. I feel as well I can sense that straight away on a minute, but if I come to the fight with true belief and I feel like I come in and no, nah, you're not beating me, dude, then then it's different altogether. And that's what mindset you've got to switch yourself into. You, it doesn't matter what task you got in earlier, you got you gotta be able to think yourself I can beat any of them. It's like it's it's like you it's like playing a football match, you play in Brazil and you're you're a Sunday league team. You're gonna think if you think, oh fucking hell, I'm gonna get beat, he's gonna get beat on you. But if you think fucking hell, come on, we are they've got two arms, two legs, let's let's have a go. The chances are it's not going to be as one side as you think. So yeah, I, I just enjoy it, go and enjoy it. And um, the thing is, I ate too much. I call call us when fight. I got in there massive. I got in there like <laughs> tw- I got in there like nearly touching twelve stone. I think mad. Adam says he's seen shrink through the fight. Must be fat mares. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was getting, I was getting, I was getting headaches before. The, I got a little headache before the fight, and I was like. I haven't got any. Adam says you've rehydrated too much. I says I haven't. I haven't drunk that much. He says Josh, you'll be non-stop drinking and eating. I went. I haven't. He says you have. I went. All right. All right. So, anyways, after the fight, we did a drug test, and they ran out of tests. They ran out of tests, so they had like David Price to test his opponent, or Joshua and I think it was Parker to test, and in a couple of, and one more fight, I think. And I'd, um, you have to have a certain amount of concentration in your pee when they test it in the urine. And um, man just kept getting, man kept getting um, more hydrated every time they were testing it, and it, it, they couldn't, they couldn't take a test because me, I was too hydrated. They says we haven't got the concentration we need, so they says we just got to avoid the test because we've got no more test, test <laughs> to test it with. So I all pissed everybody basically. <laughs> they had no see, more. see when <laughs> you're no getting like drug tested, like I, like it's I think it's a most mental experience ever. Like you're just it's sitting weird, there. And he's just literally staring at you, like. I have like, a couple of funny <laughs> stories on this. But, like, oh, mate, it's it's bad. It I'm bad, like, right? I get stage fright. I'm sitting there for about two hours, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, hey, can I have a shade instead and piss at the same time. This <laughs> 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 uh, means a lot of people do that. A lot of people do do that. I, I mean, I feel like doing that when I wait, when they knock us at six o'clock in the morning uh, oh. on Sunday, and I'm like. Are you mad? Like the missus will wake up, she'll go drug test at the door, and I go, fuck you know, this time in the morning. I can't even get no sleep. So I go downstairs and then and then I'm s i am I think myself, tell it is I might as well I might just like I might just have a shit, you know. And then he's got to watch his have a shit and a piss at the same time, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's worse on him than me. <laughs> it works well, that tactic of us say it does. Uh, <laughs> could scare them off. <laughs> why did they come? I, I hear loads of fighters saying this. Why why did they come so early? I don't know. I don't know. He's trying to catch. Sure. The scene. The scene. Josh yeah. get ten kills in one game in Warzone and thought he must be juicing. He went from zero. He went from zero. He went from negative to positive in Warzone. He must be. <laughs> Josh, obviously you're a big Sunderland fan, right? Yeah. What's it like having that support behind you? And I know your first defence wasn't it? It was in Newcastle. Do you get him yeah. a bit of a different hostile atmosphere there? Or? Yeah, I, thought, I thought a little bit, but I mean, I've got a lot of friends from Newcastle. To be to be honest, um, I'm Sunderland through and through. So ever since a kid, I was I thought I've I've tried to follow Sunderland the best I can and and be at the matches when I can and etc. Et but um, 
Newcastle, yeah, New, Newcastle, obviously, when it comes to the divide in football, it's huge. Like, Newcastle versus Sunderland is, like, massive. Like, it's huge. I know some 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 friends of, like, me, um, me old man and that, and they'll say, like, they'll, <laughs> they'll go... Oh, them people from Newcastle, they're just different, 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 trust none of them. Never trust any of them. They're different them. Like that. And I was like, I like thinking myself, it's my old school mentality. I, I get on my lads from Newcastle, but at the end of the day, I'm I'm son and I'm a son and guy through and through. I remember I'm sharing a flat with Aaron. So Aaron uh, oh, yeah. Charles from, Oh, are you? No way. Uh, uh, he's come down to do a little bit of training in the gym. So he's trying to turn professional, he's trying to turn professional, do some boxing. All good, good on him. I mean, Class, he can yeah. get, get some of these big fights out here, these big money fights with the Love Islanders or somebody else. It'd be, oh, do you know what I mean? He'd be laughing. Send them over to send them over to Yeah, send them over. That's what I'm saying. He needs to start at his mouth. Goes too nice. He's such yeah. a nice guy, but. Um, I'm sharing a flat room. My mate rings us up and goes, "What's happening?" And I says, "Oh, sorry, mate. I says, I'm, I'm just uh, getting some food. I'm here with Aaron." Uh, just from thing, she says, I'm not Tony Shaw. She says, I says, What? So you're saying the flat with a Jordy? I says, I don't look at it like that. Fucking hell. I says, He just come down and uh, he had nowhere to stay. So I put him up. He says, Fucking get off the phone to me. Get off the fucking phone to me. You know what I'm like, nah, fuck it. Like, that's, that's what it's like. Uh, it's, but it's, it's good. It's healthy. It's healthy banter. I you go what? watch Sunderland all the time, Josh, or like, no, when I, well, well, when I when I can't be honest, mate, because I'm t- so down here is like yeah. in London, so big, so fast, and obviously during the um, during the lockdown, I was. But after since I've been having this back and forth with the fights and trying to get my head round when I'm fighting, what's happening, this and this and this, I've been focusing. It's like a different world of boxing, so I focus yeah. a lot of my energy into that. But I do try and keep up to the best of standards with Sunday. I mean, my mate always get shout out to Luke Dodds if he sees this. He always, always on the phone. Listen, he's a link to the boys if you're free to watch it and all that. He's, uh, he's proper. So. Ran actually didn't make it at Sunderland, so he went on trial there when, before he I actually, Liverpool. Josh, I knocked him back, lad. I went to Liverpool. Oh, and I was like, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. Josh Kelly has left the call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Josh, I'll get you right. tickets for Radsdale Summer and no problem, man. No, I'm not. We had a good win against Paul Field 2 0. And, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. then the checker yeah, trade, and the, sorry, the Papa John's don't trophy. Me, mate, we got to take it. Mate, don't, don't. Start out our new, our new owner and stuff. Doing all right this season. <laughs> See, to be fair, you have a class new manager, and I actually rate him very highly. Uh, Lee He's, uh, yeah, he was yeah, very good at Brist- at Oldham and then Bristol City as well. So I think, to be fair, it's all there, isn't it, for now, for these to push on and sort of just it go is. up the league. Few... It's just far too big for League One. Oh, mate, massive. They bought a few new kids too as well through the academy. They seem to be scoring as well, loads. Yeah. Like, they seem to be doing... Putting, the right winger is very good, in. actually. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to make a return, Josh? Do what? Are what position did you play, Josh? All right, so when I was a kid, I used to turn. I used to play right back. I was a. I was good. We we'll take our corner spot. Happy easy enough. <laughs> <laughs> but then I played centre. I played centre mid. Um, I was always sort of in them work, work, getting yeah, a really work sort of um positions because I always had a good work rate on us and a good like will to win. I just used to like. I used to be running about with like if we were getting beat, I used to be running about with like teasing me. I said, ah, I need to get them up and ball and that. You know what I mean? Like trying to snap kids and shit. I was just like ruthless, but yeah, I lo- I I loved it. It's all about winning, isn't it? It's all about winning. Yeah, 100% <laughs> it it's all about winning. Go on you're as well, you're like... worse than Ram Burnett. Oh me, I fucking. I don't, I don't want to be doing hell sprints with you either. Yeah, I fucking hate losing. I was I was on that game the other night there, like when I went on. The street I watched that me. live. Uh... Mate, I was I was shit, but the night before, right? <laughs> I was like, I hadn't played in ages. And it was going, come on this stream, so I just, I'll come on the stream, right? So the night before, I got home and I was like, the missus, I says, you're gonna have to leave his lawn tonight. She says, why is that? I says, I've got the stream tomorrow. I really need to practice. She went, what do you mean? I says, I need to practice. Like fuck, because this is gonna be like all streamed and actually like, all right, that. So I'm on there till three. I think it was like. Oh, three in the morning, just bam, 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 shooting people, getting fucking shot. And I'm like, fuck shit, lad. And I'm thinking, I'm getting better, I'm getting better. Anyways, you know, when the pressure's on and you're online and that, and everyone's <laughs> shooting and shit, I was just fucking fell. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. <laughs> these people. Was I, was, I was playing with uh, Mick and Shakur Stevenson last night, and like they were absolutely awful. 
fucking Kerr Stevenson was fuming. Like he mess, he actually messes me after going. We need to get on again tomorrow night. I wasn't good enough tonight. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, oh, is it all right? Just to go in the war zone. It's yeah. madness how serious people take it. It's it's ridiculous. There's lo- there's a lot of money involved now if you get good and stuff, isn't it? So yeah, exactly. That's, that's the way out. Do you get do you get nervous <laughs> when you're playing? Because we we talked to Mick we talked to Mick about it and he was saying like if he's in the final circle. I was saying basically, oh, yeah. I was saying to Mick, like, you're a boxer, you couldn't possibed get nervous. You're performing in front of thousands of people. And he's like, nah, I'd be shitting myself. Do uh, you be the same? La- <laughs> when you're in the last circle, <laughs> <laughs> final circle, and people are jumping all over you and shit. You got these screamers and shit, like, shooting. Like, yeah, I just fucking lie in a bush, me, as long as I can. <laughs> 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 yeah, no. Oh, weird. Mick's serious though. Mick's get like a proper. He's like you're you're all right, all right, aren't you? Yeah, yeah right. I, I'd be the best out of your three, like by a man, like Coco yeah. Sharif. <laughs> he's, he's not, he's not good at all. Josh, I'm, top of Josh, I'm, I'm like you, him. mate. I just get a gaff, put Claymore down, and just sit in the corner. Yeah, that's what it is. Just Claymore <laughs> up, sit proximity man it up, and just boom, boom, boom. sit there like that. Ah, me little I, gun. <laughs> I don't want the beef, like. <laughs> in a no, seven RPG I, waiting for someone to walk in <laughs> yeah that's right I just uh, and I've got a, like I do the maddest things as well right so I'll i like run straight through Boneyard thing with all the planes beeline it into the last circle just straight through and no one ever shoots us no one ever thinks of the obvious way to go do you know what I mean everyone thinks nah no fucker will be stupid enough to run straight out in the open like straight through <laughs> And I'm just like, I, they know they're, probably, they're, they're, they're probably like, that's Josh Kelly fucking leaving. Yeah, fuck that, I'm like, I'm <laughs> slipping bullets and shit. <laughs> Josh drops his gun and gets his fucking left hook out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, does, does that help there's you nothing get through camps? You're in a gulag and you've got no fucking weapons and all the lads oh, yeah, and you've got fists. <laughs> I think you should be able to win this. You're a boxer. <laughs> I'm not even work. And fucking smashing the buttons, I'm getting pinged. I'm like, no excuse, Josh. You should have that twitch fiber reaction. I try and go around them, but my character is just shit. I've got like a shitty character, you know what I mean? You go, you go in the gulag and have a chin like Amir Khan. You're done after. Oh, man. Mick was saying that helps you through camp a lot. Warzone, does it? I suppose you're probably got uh, your missus with you at camp and all, so it might be different for you. Or when. When we stay at the flat, we got like this uh, one of the guys, really good guy, Paul, who's let, who give us this flat next to the gym just to stay when we train. Uh, Mick will be over next week. I st- usually I stay there during the, um, during the week. Do you know what I mean? I've had an MRI tonight, so I've had to come back through my way to get the MRI to go back through because you've got to do an annual like check up. Um, so we stay through there, but Mick, um, Mick's got his headphones on. Mick's just headphones on, locked in like this. <laughs> and he's got this little twitch because he says his headphones. Feel funny on his head, so he does this like little twitch like this, and he's doing this all the time while he's playing. I don't know how the fuck he's seeing people shoot. He's shadow boxing. He's fucking mad. He, oh, and when he dies, fuck shake. You fuck. You fucking idiot. And he goes, fucking go again. And then he sat there, fucking, right next to the table. It's like, oh, fucking so competitive. He's. Speaking speaking of the the Belfast accent, there obviously you've got yeah. a strong accent as well. The Sunderland yeah. accent and Belfast is both strong as fuck. When you yeah. went over to America, who's it harder to understand between you and Mick for the Americans? Oh, I'm not sure. I'm, I, I couldn't tell you because sometimes I understand Mick clear as a bell, but when when he comes on and he's like eating something on the phone or mumbling, like da 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 da, and I'm like, fucking hell, Mick. I said, I can't hear you. what you're saying. I like, da, 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 and I'm like, fuck's sake. But like when, we're in the, when I'm in the gym, when I speak to Aaron, who's more closer up north, I start going a really fast paced speaking and everyone can't understand me. So I don't know. Um, I think I'd actually be harder for the Americans to to understand the Mick because he goes to New York a lot. There's a lot of Irish there. And uh, well, it's the, the I, I, I always thing. find that like the people that have the likes of Belfast, Sunderland, mm. Scouse, like, you know, people that have hard accents to understand. We yeah. can all understand each other. Yeah. It's just yeah. you go to fucking London or something. Yeah, like one of these other places and they're like, what? No, nah, mate. No, nah, mate. I swear down. I'm, I'm still sure my mother-in-law doesn't understand me. So, <laughs> she's been slagging it off in her face. And Probably for the best. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. This conversation's flowing. It'll go on the YouTube and there'll be subtitles left, right and centre. Oh, mate, I know <laughs> that. I know, mate, I'm telling you. 
But a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of strong actions do understand each other. I, I, I think, anyways. Well, we're just going back to the box and better take it, take about a ten away from Warzone here. But <laughs> your yeah. fate was supposed to be happening next week. It was a, mm. it was a big, obviously, big step up against the former uh, world champion. What, what's happened yeah. there? Now it's obviously been postponed due to COVID. So when, what, what's happening with it? When's the new I've date? Got, you know, I've got it. I've got a date, but obviously this date will be released soon in the next couple of days. So I can't, I can't say anything. I'm yeah. tied up with it all, but I would, I, yeah. I'd let you know if I could, but. Um, just tell us later, yeah, Josh. It's sweet, mate. Just, <laughs> yeah. You can tell us on Warzone later. It's sweet. Is there going to be any fans? No, don't think so, no. mate. I don't think so. Just because I think they're going to. I mean, this world we're living in at the moment, mate, we kind of guarantee everything, anything at the, at the moment. So you just need to keep yourself in the gym, keep focused, and keep, um, keep ready for any opportunity. So. I mean, the first lockdown was like was it felt like a proper lockdown. This one doesn't feel as though it, it although it is supposed to be, it or whatever. But it doesn't it, to me it doesn't feel as though it's as it's as harsh as the first lockdown we were all in. So I, who knows? Who knows it, what what happens? Because I don't know what happens. I don't know what's happening with football. Football sort of leads the way with, with everything sort of thing. So we'll soon see. But that's the date. It's penciled in what I've got and um, that's the day I'm training for to perform I've, on that I, day. I, so. I've heard through the through the great fan and close friend Daddy Hearns here refer maybe February twentieth, but I don't know if, if, if <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I won't say too much, but I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> here, have you seen how much Ryan is pester daddy? It's everywhere Ryan pesters Daddy Hearn. Come on, Josh, right? I I I got his autobiography, right? I know I'm a loser, right? But I love him. And I, I got his <laughs> posted it on my story, right? He shared it, gave me a bit of attention. I was like, fucking right, buzzing, starting this boxing podcast. He's just shared me, we could get him on. Messaged him, seen it. Messaged him again, seen it, didn't reply. Messaged him again, 10 times later, just hasn't replied to me all 10. I we actually had Frank Smith on too. Yeah, we <laughs> he had Frank Smith on. Just, 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 just teasing me. Yeah, we had Frank Smith on. And then, Frank Smith, he's good banter him, he's either right yeah. He was. He gets absolute dogs abuse under the AFL videos, and honestly, he was hilarious. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's really funny. Yeah. All these guys get the pistol out of them, but I think they half love it as well because it's but just like had, people just want to. The only person not close to Eddie we haven't had on is his wife. We've had Coogan, we've had Frank Smith. <laughs> <laughs> we've had, like, with all these matchroom fighters coming on, and the only person not his wife. So we need to try and get him on or else Ryan. I'll tell you, you tell you, would be a good one, Sowland. Callis oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, was, he, he was saying the other day he was going, he was going uh, about Jay Paul, wasn't he? I'll fight Jay yeah. Paul. Did you see that? You know, I bear not with you. Yeah. Said, oh, mate, I was loving it. I mean, he's, he's, he's now he's an absolute legend. See, yeah, we were even legend. thinking, like, the amount, of, the amount of promoters out there who just, like, boxing promoters in itself is like a sport. You have, like, mm. Bob Arum and Eddie and yeah. Southern, and then you've got Frank and stuff, and they're all coming at yeah. each other. Who would I be your... White collar, everybody. You know I, mean, I, mean, I was just about to say, who would be your dream mm. matchup if they did? I think you gotta, you gotta, um, you gotta keep them respective in the ages and stuff, aren't you? So you, if you Frank Warren's fighting, he's got to fight Barry. You can't fight Eddie. Oh, he's got to fight Bob Arum, money. Like it kind of be like <laughs> Eddie will have to fight like Eddie will have to fight Color. But I, think, I mean, Color's a little, pff, isn't he? That's what I mean. Eddie's got the reach and all if, that. Yeah, but, I don't know if I fancy Eddie's chances there. Here, I've seen Eddie. He, he can go a bit. I've seen him hit the bag a couple can, of times on a few Coogan videos. He looks, he doesn't look too bad. I think you Frank, Frank you. Warren's, like, Frank Warren's fucked in that. I, I would say <laughs> Bob Arum. I'd say Bob Arum stops Frank Warren in the second. <laughs> Big five, right. five left hook combination. Josh Kelly style. <laughs> Bob Arum, man. Bob Arum, man. He's a legend in the sport. Been yeah, a long time, so man. Josh, he coming up to this fight. Obviously, there's been a bit of needle between you and this geezer before. I'm not even going to attempt to say his name. Um, yeah. Bit of yeah, needle before. Asian. There you go. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, see, see, like, going into this, does that make it a wee bit extra, like, when there is needle like that before? See, there's no, I don't think there's much needle between me and him, unless he's got some feeling, some sort of way about me. I don't feel much about him. About him. I just think he's another fight, but I think it's more to do with his, his team and the guys around him who's... Be English and want to voice their opinions because they're like Boom, David cannot speak full English, so we have to back them up. But we're back them yeah. up with whatever we're thinking, not what <laughs> David's thinking. Do you know what I mean? So these guys are flying in right, left, and centre. But um, mate, 
the thing is, every fight, I was explaining this to a guy before, he's like, this is a really important fight. I said, of course it is, but every fight before this has been important because if I didn't win the last fight, I didn't win the fight before, I wouldn't be in this position. So as every fight's a must-win fight, so there's no fights where you're like, oh, I've got to win this one. It's because you put more pressure on yourself. And at and, and the end of the day, a fight's a fight. I've been doing it since I've been a kid, so I was getting there and it's what I do. It's I just, It's like... People go about and boxing and see people scared to fight people. I don't ever think I don't, personally if I'm if I think the boxers think the same as me, I don't think anybody's ever scared to fight anybody. I never ever get in the ring and feel scared. I never ever feel that way. Not even when I've been in the sparring ring with proper punches. I just feel like I'm in the ring, I've got a referee there, I've got people there who have got my best interest at all. If I'm getting fucking smashed all over then hopefully God willing someone will because I'm as a fighter I'm not going to take a step out of the ring I'll stay in there till the end but hopefully these people can step in and stop the thing so it's not it's, it's more of a sport to me it's like why would you be scared to run against someone else the only reason you'd be worried is if you thought you would lose and you didn't want to progress forward but um, scared in boxing I don't think I'd ever be scared and this is what these guys have been saying well speaking of, of Needle What's it like for you when you're like you're focusing on this? This is by far the biggest fight uh, of your career, and then you have mm. Conor Ben calling you out, and like everyone's attention sort of switches to that. Uh, I know. Is that annoying? But, mm, no, it is. Um, I've been watching watching a few people lately and watching the way they move and stuff, and I see it with me, it's like. It's like I know the truth deep down. I know what goes on deep down. I know what happened deep down. So. The only way, um, the only way I move forward in the future and get big. Well, to be fair, if you look at this, if you look at David Avenation, you look at Conor Ben, David Avenation's here, Conor Ben's here. So when I beat David, then I'm up there and I'm actually taking a big step down to fight Conor. But the domestic scene and how big of a needle between that makes it actually bigger than the Avenation fight, which is it's great for me because that means I can step down and fight him. So that's, I mean, that's what I do. That's what I'll do. Everyone will see. But if he agrees to after this fight, it's, an, it's another thing. Would that, would that be for when do you reckon? Well, obviously, you know, we can't really talk mm. past David Avenation, but for, in hindsight, um, whatever, uh, would that be with fans? Like, would that be in London or would you want that in Sunderland Stadium of Light? I would, love in the, I would love it in the stadium. A lot Saints. of people, I, I mean, I heard, I heard some people about a year ago saying, no, that would never happen in the stadium. You couldn't, it couldn't do the stadium in this. But, mate, yeah, the amount of support from Sunderland, yeah, I think yeah. 100% mm -hmm. he could. I think Sunderland mm -hmm. in general is screaming for them big nights back at the stadium and like big, like the Derby days, we're missing them Derby days. So to get this needle, to get local fighters on the card, to get the town and city behind someone or something, I think. Um, Not 100% sounds like you know it. Easy. I, think Easy. Well. I think I think as well. That's a yeah. no brainer. So 100. Yeah. That'd be unbelievable. Like like fan bases, like Sunderland fans are one of the most passionate fan bases, along with like Newcastle, mm. um, Liverpool, Man United, and then the Celtic and Rangers. Like I think they're all in a league of their own for like how yeah. passionate fans are. So that would sell out five times over I'd say especially because oh, there's such a buzz yeah. around you now and then Sunderland fans not having them fight and boxing's been taken away basically from everyone for mm. probably going to be a year and a half now where yeah. it's literally everyone's just going to flood through the gates really for and Conor yeah. Ben's name as well like Conor Ben he's obviously got that, that name that from mm. Nigel and what he's created himself both of you mm. coming together that's, that's going to be one of the best fights in British boxing yeah, what can you I mean? say I pray for it bro I pray for it happen so that's all I can Come say. on. Come on. I'm buzzing. To be fair, though, I want you v Mick in a 1v1 on Warzone before you v Connor Ben. To be honest, I want to see that label. <laughs> <laughs> no, Josh, Josh versus Tyrone McKenna. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's the <laughs> money. <laughs> thing, I see Tyrone moving like that. Oh, he's, he's funny, Tyrone. He is. Yeah, yeah, I know, mate. I see, I seen you, I seen you commenting between each other. I was like, he's done me there. He must have been watching this. Nah, I'm not the best on Mozart. I will get better though. All time and experience. Yeah. By the time I'm 40, I should be there. Right? Time, yeah. <laughs> if you if you get Bernat, then the train you on it. <laughs> Fucking hell, my fingers will be bent out. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been, us. it's been great having you on thanks so much for doing this with us my really man. really appreciate of it of course lads it's been a pleasure myself it's been a pleasure to be on um, and 
I'm a massive fan of the Irish guys as well. Like I've got a lot of a lot of good Irish friends. Like Mick's one of obviously one of my close friends and um um got a big Irish back on myself, so it's good to be on and get the support for the Irish fans as well. Absolutely, gentlemen. Josh. 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 We'll be if following you your wanted. career very closely. Yeah, absolutely. And if you wanted, like we get you on down the line again before a big fight, yeah. that would be unbelievable. Oh, 100%. Before that Bennett right. Stadium of Light. Oh, mate, listen. <laughs> that oh, would, no, it is. Josh, like, before, before you go, way. can you give us an Hawaii the lads for all the summer fans out there? Hawaii the lads. F- <laughs> How are we, man? How are we? How are we? How are we? Thanks for having yeah, we, we know you're, we know you're busy in, you're busy in the Jordy Shore house, so <laughs> get back to Jordy Shore. <laughs> 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 oh, nah, thanks a million for coming on mate and we'll, my, my. Uh, I'd love to get you on again soon absolutely gentlemen yes when we say guys right I'll catch you up I'll see Cheers. you later, man, Josh. See you later. Yeah, well folks that was it for episode 15 with Josh Pretty Boy Kelly a great insight from one of the future greats of British boxing join us next week when we'll be back with another very special guest thanks for everyone listening <laughs>